What's up, Fragrant World? And welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. Today we got a list. I know you guys like lists. So I'm bringing you a list. And this is a list of my top 10 most versatile fragrances. Now these are fragrances that basically fit into just about any scenario that I need all year round. So they are all season, all occasion fragrances. They are ranked from basically least fresh to most fresh. However, they all work for just about any occasion that I need them to. Now, these aren't necessarily in order of my favorites, from my least favorite to my most favorite. Again, just in terms of the utility of the fragrance, how versatile it is. And generally, the fresher the fragrance is, the more versatile it will be. Because if it has good performance, you can pull it off in the cooler weather just fine. It will be detected and it's not gonna offend anyone because it's fresh. And obviously in the summertime, it will be enhanced by the heat. So we're gonna dive right into this. First up, we got a few honorable mentions here. I can't talk about versatility without talking about these fragrances. This is Creed Aventus here and it's Clone Parfums Vintage Emperor Eau de Parfum. You probably already know about these. They smell wonderful, I love them, but like I said, yeah. Like I've said, I've made a vow to wear this scent DNA as little as I can this year. Again, I'm, I'm trying to stick to that, so hence, it needs to be mentioned, but honorably. So, it is an honorable mention. And our next honorable mention and final one, this is an oil. This is called Shea Rose. I talked about this in a recent video from the House of Oil Perfumery. And this is a beautiful scent. Now, generally I wouldn't wear an oil in the summer. I don't think oils are all that fitting for hot weather, but the scent profile is quite fresh here. Beautiful, watery rose with some oud and violet in there. It's just, it's gorgeous. Not too sweet at all, but it does have a a freshness and a rosiness to it, a little bit floral, but it's just gorgeous. But again, it's an oil. I wouldn't normally reach for it, so it is an honorable mention. All right, and to the list, we have number 10. From the house of Mask Milano, this is homage to Hemingway. This fragrance has really been growing on me over the past, I don't know, six months or so. Oh. Beautiful quality. This house is astounding. I would love to try more. I've loved the first 10 fragrances that they released. I got to try those via sample. And then I got this one in bottle form. Uh, they're all just amazing. All different from each other, all great quality. This one is quite versatile to me. It is a vetiver based scent. Vetiver is something that can be worn just about all year round, depending on the treatment. Here you got a ton of vetiver. There's three different types. I think you got vetiver heart in here, which is your more fresher type. You have Haitian vetiver and you have uh, vetiver from Java. So you got these leathery qualities, these earthy qualities, smoky qualities, and there's some ginger in there to kind of give it a little bit of zing and aromatic nature, kind of spicy. Really beautiful scent. The least versatile on this list in my opinion, but something that you could wear just about anywhere depending on the sprays. It does have an earthy thickness to it, even though it is kind of transparent. So it's versatile enough. You just gotta be careful how much you put on because it does pack a bit of a punch. So that is homage to Hemingway. At the ninth spot, Christian Dior, Dior Homme, the 2011 version. And you might think that maybe the scent profile of this isn't all that versatile. And, you know, again, it is a little on the sweeter side. It's a little bit kind of oriental in a way, even though there's not really much oriental nature to it in terms of the notes. There may be amber in here, but I'm not sure. Lots of lavender and iris. Uh, there's bergamot. So there's a freshness to it, but there's also a rich sweetness to it. But it is an eau de toilette. It doesn't scream. And that, I think, lends it to be okay for the warmer weather. I wouldn't wear this during the day, on a casual day out in the heat. I would not reach for this first thing. That's why it's so low. But maybe if I know I'm gonna be indoors, I would definitely reach for this if it's more, a more elegant occasion. So that is Dior Homme, beautiful scent. I love that. At the eighth spot, 
From the House of Parfums Vintage, we have Imbue, which is their take on Gucci Parfum 2. Beautiful tea-based scent. You got tea, you got cinnamon, you got, I think there's violet in here. It has some watery qualities to it. It's kind of sweet, but it's a little warm and also a little bit fresh. So we're kind of getting more fresh here. Oof, so beautiful. I wouldn't normally reach for tea fragrances in the warmer weather, that's why it's lower in the list. But again, because of its scent profile, you can pull it off in the hot weather. It'll be just fine, just don't put too much on, otherwise it comes off a little strange. But it's a gorgeous scent, and you can wear it any occasion. That is imbue. At the seventh spot, we have a decant. This is called Musk Ensance, I think, <laughs> and it's from the House of Eighties de Venustas. Man, this is a gorgeous scent. And I have Carlos from Brooklyn, fragrance lover, to thank for this decant. He was so generous to send it to me after I had mentioned that I loved the fragrance in a previous video and I had a sample that I spilled. And so he was nice enough to say, hey man, I have a full bottle, take some of it, and here it is. So Carlos, thank you so much. I love this fragrance. I've been wearing it sparingly, but I have found that, man, this stuff is pretty versatile. It's musk based it's kind of hard to describe it's a very airy scent there's again it's musky it's kind of transparent a little bit sweet kind of smoky even the scent profile of it is just so open and but it does have a, a bit of a, a richness to it it's hard to describe you got to get your nose on it but i think it works on any occasion because it comes off very subtle but when you really detect it, it's there. It's very prominent. It will make its presence known. It's gonna last on the skin a while, but it's not beast mode. It's not gonna project like crazy. So you could wear it just about anywhere. It's very elegant, but it can also be casual. This is definitely signature scent worthy. So that is Musk en Sense. Up next, number six, a fragrance we all know and love, at least most of us do. This is Reflection Man from Amouage. Oh, yes. I used to think this wasn't that um, versatile because it came off very thick and powdery to me. But the more I've worn it, I've found out that it does have this beautiful freshness to it. Even though it is based on white florals, which can be kind of heady and thick, it does have a nice open nature to it. It is pretty aromatic, but it's so elegant and rich. You can wear this in the daytime or at night. Again, just about any time of the year. I would not reach for this first thing if it's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I'm not going to put this on. There's others I will put on that are higher up on the list, but when it's pretty moderate, I will put this on. Even when it's cooler, I will put this on. I love this stuff because it does have great performance, so it will do you well in the cool weather. That is Amouage Reflection Man. We're at number five here. L'Homme Ultime from Yves Saint Laurent. This is uh, relatively new to me now. I've had it a couple months at this point, but oh yes, this stuff, it's a beautiful take on the original loan. You have that DNA deep down in there, but it does have its own character to it. It's a beautiful rose and ginger based scent. So it has this nice floral quality to it, a little bit sweet, it does have that zingy ginger. It does have some woodiness to it. I think there's still vetiver in here carried over from the original. I don't remember exactly what makes it sweet. I know in the original alone we have tonka bean. I don't know if that's in here. If it is, I'll put it on the screen. Either way, it comes off aromatic and fresh, but that woodiness and the slight sweetness to it and that rosiness even kind of lends it to do well when it's not so warm outside. This is perfect all year round. It really shines in the spring. That's why it's kind of here in the middle because I think the spring is a good kind of middle season, but uh, you could wear it anywhere. It does great elegant or casual. So once again, great versatile scent. That is Lone Mold Team from Yves Saint Laurent. At number four, we're getting fresher here. We got Aqua Dijon Absolute. Now this is a fresh aquatic scent, but it does have some slight woody nature to it and some even almost oriental, but not quite. We got a beautiful amber wood note, which does bring this warmth to the base as it dries. There's some other woods in there, but it is still fresh and aquatic like the original Aqua Dijon, but it does have a fruity nature to it as well. So you have these, these multiple facets coming together that make it fit in just about every season and occasion. You got the freshness, 
for warm weather and for casual wear. You got the sweetness and the fruitiness, which is great for the spring, really. And then you have this warmth in the base, which will do you well in the fall and winter. Maybe not my first pick when it's dead cold outside, but you could get away with it because it is an eau de parfum and it does have very decent performance. So that's Aqua Dijon, absolute. At number three, from the house of Martin Margiela, or just Margiela, from the replica line we have at the Barbers. I love this stuff. I've reviewed it. You can check that out here if you want to know more about the scent. Beautiful fougere fragrance in the barbershop vein. Kind of smells like shaving foam. Very fresh and aromatic and spicy. Has some leatheriness to it. So it does have a nice, again, multifaceted composition here. It's going to be fresh, great for the warm weather. It does have spicy nature, which is great for, you know, the cooler, moderate temperatures like spring. And the leather is beautiful for the winter if you are feeling a fougere in the winter time. Decent performance, not the best, but I get decent longevity and I can detect it around me most of the day. And this is great when you're dressed up, but it does great casually too. So that's at the Barber's. At number two, this is a fragrance I recently reviewed. If you did not check that review out, I'll link it up here in just a second. But this is called Obsidian from Le Vieux. I always forget how to say this word. <laughs> I apologize. Rêveur. Thank you. That's how we say it. This is, it means dreamer. It's French for dreamer. And this is a beautiful, soapy, almost clean laundry scent. Pretty good quality. There's a lot of fruitiness to it. You got bergamot. You do have some pineapple in there. But it, it's kind of sweet, but not too sweet. It's fresh and soapy and clean, super clean, super easy to wear, a great high quality dumb reach fragrance. I'm liking this more and more, the more I wear it. I wasn't crazy about it when I first wore it, I was a little underwhelmed, but now I'm really starting to appreciate this. So that is Obsidian from this house that I cannot say the dang name. Dang it. <laughs> and finally at number one, not my favorite fragrance of all time, like I said, but one that I do get a lot of wear out of simply because it is very versatile. Been wearing it a lot lately. From the house of Roja, Raja Parfums, I'll say, Elysium. And this is a no brainer for any time of the year. Just fresh and clean and citrusy and woody. There's a bunch of notes in this. There's a lot going on in this fragrance, but you can wear it anywhere, anytime. It's a parfum cologne concentration. So it has aspects of both a parfum and also an eau de cologne. It has the longevity of parfum. It's gonna stay on your skin at least seven, eight hours, even in the cooler weather. And it kind of has the nature of an eau de cologne just in the way that it smells. So it's funny how they combine these two concentrations together into something that works really well. It will be present around you. You can be pretty liberal with the sprays, but it's no slouch. It's again, fresh and clean. Juniper berry, there's again, citruses in here. Grapefruit is a major player. Lots of vetiver in here. Just a really well, put together composition. Kind of simple, but great quality, easy to wear. That's what we're talking about for versatility. You can wear it anywhere and everyone will love this on you. Nobody will dislike this unless they don't have a nose or a sense of smell and they're just jealous because they can't smell it. So that's the only reason I can think of. Anyway, that's my list of my top versatile fragrances. At the moment, this could always change with time. What I want to know is your number one favorite versatile fragrance. One fragrance that you have in your collection, just one that you can wear anywhere. It's a dumb reach, any occasion, casual or elegant, hot or cold. You throw it on, you know it works. You don't even think twice about it. Let me know what that is down in the comments. Once again, let's talk about it. Love to have a conversation and learn what you guys are wearing. If you like the video, make sure you leave me a like. I appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting on? I don't have a watch, but I'm going to check the time and wait for you to subscribe. Just hit the button and we'll be on our way. I'm waiting for you there. Yes, you haven't done it yet. All of us are waiting on you. Go ahead and hit the button and then we can move on. 
Are you going to do it or what? Hit the button. Thank you so much once again. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.